video six, importing data from a JSON resource. In the last video, we learned how to import data from flat data file, that is a tab delimited file. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can get data imported from a JSON resource. We'll use GitHub for that purpose. This video will show us how we can read the JSON data format. Moreover, we'll be using a remote resource in this video. It will add a tiny level of complexity to the video, but it will also make it much more useful because in real life we'll encounter more remote resources than local ones. JavaScript object notation, JSON, is used as a platform independent format to exchange data between systems or applications. A resource in this context is anything we can read, be it a file or a URL endpoint, which can be the output of a remote process, program or just a remote static file. In short, we don't care who produced a resource and how they did it, we just need it to be a known format like JSON. In order to get started with this video, we need the requests module installed and importable in Python path in our virtual environment. We have installed this module in section one. We also need internet connectivity as we'll be reading a remote resource. We'll perform these steps. One. Define the GitHub URL of a JSON file with the details of a GitHub profile. Two, get the contents from the URL using the requests module. Three, read the content as JSON. Here's the code in a file called section two JSON read github.py. This code performs reading and passing of the recent activities timeline from the GitHub site. Now we'll see how this code works. First, we use the requests module to fetch a remote resource. This is very straightforward as the requests module offers a simple API to define HTTP verbs, so we just need to issue one get method call. This method retrieves data and requests metadata and wraps it in the response object, so we can inspect it. For this video, we're only interested in the response.json method, which automatically reads content, available at resource.content, and passes it as JSON and loads it into the JSON object. Now that we have the JSON object, we can process the data. In order to do that, we need to understand what data looks like. We can achieve that understanding by opening the JSON resource using our favorite web browser or command line tool such as wget or cURL. Another way is to fetch data from IPython and inspect it interactively. We can achieve that by running our program from IPython. After execution, we are left with all the variables that the program produced. List them all using the command shown on screen. Whatever method we use, we gain knowledge about the structure of the JSON data and the ability to see what parts of the structure we're interested in. The JSON object is basically just a Python dictionary, or if stated in a more complex manner, a dictionary of dictionaries, and we can access parts of it using a well-known key-based notation. In our example, the .json file contains the details of a GitHub profile, and we can access the location of the user referencing JSON underscore OBJ location. If we compare the structure of the dictionary JSON underscore OBJ with that of the .json file, we see that each entry in the .json file corresponds to a key in the dictionary. This means that the entire content of the .json file is now into the dictionary. Keep in mind that when you load a .json file, in order of the keys is not preserved. Now we run the code. So that's the output. It shows various timelines from the GitHub URL. Nice. The JSON format, specified by RFC 4627, became very popular recently as it is more human readable than XML, and it is also less verbose, hence it's lighter in terms of the syntax is required to transfer data. It's very popular in the web application domain as it's native to JavaScript, the language used by most of today's rich internet applications. The Python JSON module has more capabilities than we displayed here. For example, we could specialize the basic JSON encoder slash JSON decoder class to transform our Python data into JSON format. The classical example uses this approach to JSONify the Python built-in type for complex numbers. For simple customization, we don't have to subclass the JSON decoder slash JSON encoder class as some of the parameters can solve our problems. For example, JSON loads will pass a float as the Python type float and most of the time it will be right. Sometimes, however, the float value in the .json file represents a price value, and this is better represented as a decimal. We can instruct the JSON parser to pass floats as decimal. For example, we have the following JSON string. This is followed by these two lines of code. 
the preceding two lines of code will generate this output. Cool, isn't it? So, that marks the end of this video. In this video, we have learned how to import data from a JSON resource like GitHub. Awesome. In the next video, we'll learn about importing data from a database.